So the next part and the next understanding is to then learn how to write the electron configuration using subshell notation of any monatomic ion in the first 38 uh, elements of the periodic table. So we could expect you to do that given the uh, formula of the ion, or we might even get you to predict what the charge is first and then to work out what the electron configuration is. And one of the biggest things that's going to help you is to think of the periodic table in this sense here, where what we've done is we've divided up the periodic table according to various subshells. So keeping in mind this is the period one elements, and because they fill their highest energy electron in an S subshell, we call these the 1S, uh, 1S atoms. We've got here lithium and beryllium, they sit in period 2 in the S block, so they're the 2S. We've got the 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P, and finally 5S, which includes up to and including element number 38. Remember, this allows us to easily work out the electron configuration because it simply tells us the order in which to fill up the subshells. So we're going to use this and look at how we can actually determine the electron configuration of uh, an ion. So let's start off with cations, and I've just given you a few points here to keep in mind. Uh, so if we are given the charge, it's just important to subtract the appropriate number of electrons from the original uh, atom, and these electrons are removed from the highest occupied subshell. So that's a very key thing to keep in mind. If we look at uh, sodium as a species, and I'm going to do this in uh, a number of ways, I'm going to look at the electron configuration of the atom and then the ion to get you to see the difference. And at the same time, I'm going to compare this to the electron configuration of neon, which uh, has a stable electron configuration. And what we know is that sodium, so let's just write its electron configuration first. So we start off with 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. If we are going to form a sodium ion, now keep in mind Na has a positive charge, so it's lost one electron, and we lose that one electron from the highest occupied subshell, which is 3s here. So when we write the electron configuration, this is what we are left with. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And you can see this is exactly the same electron configuration as neon. So sodium ions adopt the same electron configuration as neon atoms. And it does that because neon has a stable uh, valence shell configuration. So sodium ions will also achieve that stable valence configuration. If we look at anions, so this is kind of the opposite. So instead of subtracting, we have to add the appropriate number of electrons. And what we do is we add electrons to the highest occupied subshell. So I'm going to do this in a very similar way. So we're just going to have a look at phosphorus here and the phosphate, uh, phosphide ion. We're going to compare that to the electron configuration of uh, one of the noble gases, which is argon. So this is its electron configuration here. Phosphorus, which is uh, element number 15, its electron configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. If we have a look at the phosphide ion, we can see it's got a three negative charge. So that tells us it's going to gain three electrons uh, and it's going to try and fill up the highest occupied subshell here, which is a 3p subshell. So let's go ahead and do this. And there we have it. So the electron configuration of the phosphide ion. And again, you can see that the electron configuration just resembles and it's exactly the same as the electron configuration of the noble gas a little bit further down on the periodic table. So atoms will generally try and achieve those stable uh, valence shell configurations that resemble our noble gases. The last thing that we're going to talk about are transition metals because they do something a little bit different. With transition metals, and we're talking about elements 21 to 30 in our case, uh, we know that they have this additional 3D subshell that uh, some of the other period 3 elements don't have. And the real key point that I want you to keep in mind is that 
when they lose electrons, and keep in mind these are metals, so metals generally lose electrons, they will lose the electrons from the 4s subshell before they remove it from the 3d. And transition metals can form various charges, so we're going to see a range of transition metal ions just belonging to one particular element. So we're going to deal with scandium. So we're going to deal with scandium, and this is the electron configuration for scandium. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d1. So that's element number 21. If we look at its first type of ion that can form, so a scandium with a one positive charge, that means it's lost one electron. So this will have to lose it from the 4s subshell. So when we write the electron configuration, what we can see is that now we've removed one electron from the 4s subshell, but we've kept that electron in the 3d subshell. If we look at the second example, scandium can form a two positive ion as well. So this has lost two electrons, and this means that it will lose that one additional electron that's in that 4s subshell. So when we write the electron configuration, we can see now that that 4s subshell is actually left out completely. And so now it only ends up with that 3d1. Finally, with a, a scandium 3 plus ion, so now it's lost yet another electron, and this now will lose it from the 3d subshell. So its electron configuration, you can see, is as such. So that concludes the first part of subtopic 2.2 on ionic bonding. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for the next couple of videos that will come out soon. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.